wish to see me? Yes. What can I do for you? Give me back my husband. Give you back your husband? Yes. <coughs> you are wondering which one he is? He's a blonde man. Not very tall. Wears spectacles. He's a lawyer. Your manager's lawyer. Alfred's his first name. Oh, I have met him. Yes, I know you have. I implore you, give him back to me. You mustn't mistake my silence for embarrassment. I'm at a loss because I don't quite see how I can give you back your husband when I haven't got him to give. You just admitted you knew him. That scarcely implies that I have taken him from you. Of course I know him. He threw up my last contract. And it seems to me I have seen him once or twice since then backstage. A rather nice-spoken, fair-haired man. Did you say he wore spectacles? Yes. I don't remember him with spectacles. He probably took them off. He wanted to look his best to you. He's in love with you. He never takes them off when I'm around. He doesn't care how he looks when I'm around. He doesn't love me. I implore you, give him back to me. been getting on rather badly of late? Yes, of course. You used to be very affectionate to each other? <laughs> Why, yes. And of late you have been quite cold? Yes. Of course. My dear, if you only knew how often we actresses meet this sort of thing, it is perfectly clear that your husband has been playing a little comedy to make you jealous, to revive your interest in him. Do you 
really think that? Do you mean to say such a thing has happened to you before? Countless times. It happens to every actress who is moderately pretty and successful. It is one of the oldest experiences in the world. And we actresses are such conspicuous targets for it. There is scarcely a man connected with the theater who has not made use of us in that way sometime or another. Authors, composers, scene designers, lawyers, orchestra leaders, even the managers themselves. To regain a wife or a sweetheart's affection, all they need to do is invent a love affair with one of us. Usually, we don't know a thing about it. But even when it is brought to our notice, we don't mind so much. At least we have the consolation of knowing that we are the means of making many marriage happy, which might otherwise have ended in the divorce court. But how? How could I know? Dear, dear, you mustn't apologize. But of course, you could know. It seems so plausible. You fancy your husband in an atmosphere of perpetual temptation, in a backstage world full of beautiful sirens without scruples and morals. One actress, you suppose, is more dangerous than a hundred ordinary women. You hate us and fear us. None understands that better than your husband, who is evidently of any cunning lawyer. He writes a letter and leaves it behind him on the desk. Thrust. A lawyer never to do that unintentionally. He orders flowers for you by telephone in the morning and probably cancels the order the moment he reaches the office. By the way, hasn't he a lock of my hair? Yes, in his desk drawer. I'm yes. it with me. They bribe my hairdresser to steal from me. There's a wonder I have any hair left at all. Is that how he got it? I can't imagine how else. Tell me, hasn't he any of my love letters lying around? No. Don't be alarmed. I haven't written him any. Then what made you say? He, I might have if he had come to me frankly and said, I say, Sarah, would you do something for me? My wife and I aren't getting on so well. Would you write me a fashion love letter that I can leave lying around at home where she may find it? I should certainly have done it for him. I'd have written a letter that would have made you weep into your pillow for a fortnight. I wrote ten like that for a very eminent playwright once, but he had no luck with them. His wife was such a proper person. She returned them all to him unread. How good you are. How clever. I am neither better nor worse than any other girl in the theater, even though you do consider us such monsters. I have been a perfect fool. Well, you do look a bit silly standing there with tears in your eyes and your face flushed with happiness because you have discovered that a little blonde man with spectacles loves you after all. My dear, no man deserves to be adored as much as that. But then, it's your own affair, isn't it? Yes. Yet I want to give you a parting bit of advice. Don't let him fool you like this again. He won't. Have no fear. No matter what you may find in his pockets, letters, handkerchiefs, my photographs, no matter what flowers he orders, or letters he writes, or appointments he makes, don't be taken in a second time. You can be sure of that. And you won't say anything to him about my coming here, will you? Not a word. I'm angry with him for him not coming to me, frankly, for permission to use my name the way he did. You are a dear. I don't know how to thank you. You mustn't begin to cry all over again. You have made me so happy.